government through this program is connected with the villages which so far this program could achieve to form more than 22,000 of community development councils at the village level covering more than 29,000 villages in Afghanistan. So that shows the huge network that through this program uh, could be achieved. That's why it's special. And beside making that network, these all CDCs have been provided with the support of the international community, international donors. Uh, including the U.S. government, the, 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 the European countries, World Bank. With their support of financially, we were able to send to all these CDCs an amount of varying from $25,000 to $60,000 block grants, which all these CDCs were able, with the utilization of these block grants, to meet their prioritized development needs. So. When it comes to NSP, why it is special? It's special because it builds such a strong network. It, tie up, it ties up the villagers with the government, as well as it streamlines development at the grassroots level. Oh, wow. Thanks. Thanks very much. And what is your opinion? What are the top challenges in the Afghanistan? Top well, uh, we have many challenges, I should say, if I answer this in short. But beside, beside the progress that we made in such programs like NSP, Afghanistan have suffered uh, since 30 years of internal fighting, political disorder, and lack of government, and lots of other problems. So at this stage, Afghanistan simply has lots of challenges. And uh, the main challenge, which I think is very important right now, is the security challenge. Security is a key challenge there which actually sometimes undermines the process of peace building and development as well as it make the people suffer, make the people live in, a, in an unstable uh, lives uh, that they are not certain about their future. So security is the top challenge there. Secondly, the lack of confidence among the local population, the lack of trust is the second key challenge and that was shaken by a number of factors internally and externally. So that is also a key challenge at this stage. Unavailability of development resources to meet all the priorities because as a result of 30 years of war, internal fighting, disorder, Afghanistan had been, tot been totally collapsed. Not only the human capital that requires to work on, but the physical capital also to require, requires to be worked on. That's why we have limited resources for development in that country. I know we have so far, the international community have been so generous, pumped lots of financial resources as donation to that country for development purposes, but beside being thankful to those, I must also say that those resources are not enough. It's not enough. So this is also a, a challenge. And the fourth challenge, I should say, is the, 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 the problem of the capacity. First of all, we have a challenge is that the capacity is usually in the past have not been uh, well defined. Capacity not in terms of the uh, 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 Afghan leaders, capacity in terms of the lack of resources, lack of tools, lack of equipments to let the Afghans themselves lead their process of peace building and development. So we have a number of these challenges and we have i'm sure many more challenges also but i try to 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 name the key challenges okay so next question we're ready for three more and how can you describe today the situation in the afghanistan well the situation in current afghanistan is that we have as i said the in the challenges that we have security problems you might have heard yesterday that we had a blast. These security incidents, these explosions, suicide attacks, have become a normal in daily practice that Afghans have started living with. So, an Afghanistan, that its picture out of Afghanistan is shown that it's a country with terror, it's a country with explosions, it's a country with suicide attacks every day happening. So we have security on the top of everything in Afghanistan. And secondly, an Afghanistan which requires a tremendous push for development.
and it's thirdly it, an Afghanistan that requires focus on its capacity on the local human capital development. So the current look of Afghanistan is a country which is having a, a, a weak government, requires to be more strengthened. It's having a nation which is living in, 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 in an uncertain situation. It is having an infrastructure that requires more building and development. It is having an insecure environment in some part of the countries. So uh, currently Afghanistan is going through a very tough and challenging situation. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for asking this. I think this is a very key question. Uh, the main directions that the international uh, institutions or organizations should really move toward, the experience has shown that working through Afghans, leading Afghans on the lead role, having Afghans in the upfront have always been productive and was really result oriented. So. I recommend the international uh, uh, organizations and institutions focus more on building the true capacity of Afghans to lead their process of development and peace building. That's the overall direction that they should move toward. The eyes of mission in my country, starting from 2001, has made tremendous achievements. At a time Afghanistan uh, uh, started its new regime in 2001, we had no security forces. We didn't have the financial resources. We didn't have the capacity. So at that time, the only institution that provided security to the Afghans in its government was ISAF. So I take this opportunity to thank also ISA for the past years that they have served so genuinely for the security and peace building in Afghanistan. So they have, besides having tremendous achievements that so far they were able to achieve, uh, there are also problems. I mean, I can name uh, uh, the, the issue of the local casualties. It is quite understandable that when there are uh, a security problem, when there are requirements for bombardment, when there are opposition in an area that requires to be defeated, the military interventions may end up with some local casualties. But the challenge here is that there has been little efforts made to reduce this local casualties. So that's a challenge. So uh, that's a challenge which I recommend for our colleagues from ISAF that they have to focus on this. They have to work a little bit more because the local casualties really change the mindset and in general the public opinion about NATO and ISAF. Not only our casualties but every Afghan in the country is concerned about any casualty if it's national or international. We cannot afford any more local uh, uh, loss of lives if it's Afghans or if it's non-Afghans. So my evaluation eventually about ISAF that it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a strategic, it's a very uh, 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 comprehensive institution for providing security in that part of the world which has the capacity which has the understanding and they have had uh, great achievements so far and, uh, and as Afghans and Afghanistan need them, uh, their continuation of mission, of course with consideration to the few recommendations I made, would be key to the success of Afghan in the future as well as the success of NATO mission in my country. Thank you very much. Thank you.